liberty to obey the Lord. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. What a privilege it is this morning together in the Lord's house. Amen. Feel his presence, his spirit, amen, among us this morning. Uh, I've, I've, I've felt that, amen, every night we've been here in this revival, amen, his, his presence, his touch. Amen. Touching us. And I feel his, I feel the Lord this morning. I feel his tender, tender spirit, his mercy. Amen. Touching us and moving among us this morning. And I don't know about you, but I don't take that for granted. Amen. I don't, I don't think God ever does anything accidental or, or it's just a, an occurrence of, of, of circumstance. But God moves among his people on purpose. Amen. He's here this morning for a purpose, for a reason. Amen. To move in this service. And I, I don't want to take that for granted at all. Amen. Hallelujah. I want God. Lord, if you hear from me. If you you come by and touch me this morning. I want to be willing. I want to be a recipient of that touch. Amen. I want you to come by and to, and to move in my life. And change me. I don't want to be afraid of change. Amen. Do you? I don't want to be afraid of God being able to touch me. And find things in my life. And search my heart. And say, this is going to cause you problems somewhere down the road. And just let me do a little spiritual surgery and, and take that out. Just let me add, you, you're going to need this strength uh, a couple of weeks down the road or tomorrow on the job. You're going to need my touch. You're going to need my patience. Just let me put that in you this morning. Amen. I want to be willing. Amen. And I want to always be that vessel on the wheel. Amen. Of the potter and allow him to touch us this morning. So I'm thankful for his presence. Amen. I want to say thank you to the church. We feel at home, amen, for all your accommodations, everything you've done, amen. I, I, I feel, amen, as, as welcome here as I have ever anywhere, amen. And I appreciate, amen, the efforts. Uh, I, I know um, church has been in revival here for this week, and your body gets tired physically. Uh, we've been in revival, um, uh, including this one at home for about two and a half weeks now, having a mighty revival up in Tifton, Georgia. God's really moving and touching and blessing, and you can hear my voice, <laughs> amen. I, I might have been hollering a little bit. And, and, uh, and 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 getting to get into the service, I've been trying to to uh, to to rest that, but but uh, you can hear that, Amen. And so I know what it's like to be in revival. I know what it's like to uh, have that, Amen. That tiredness, Amen. But the Lord's here to help us this morning. We do appreciate everything done, the offering, Amen. Our pastor and his wife, their labors, Amen. Things they've done, Amen. I know God's going to help them, and bless them, and bless you all for everything you've done, Amen. Praise the Lord. My wife's voice is a little, is a little rough this morning. All ours is. She's going to sing. Pray for her as she sings this morning. Look for the Lord to help us. Let's just, let's just draw near. Amen. Find that place. God would have us be this morning in the service and, and, and let the Lord touch us and move among us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If I wrote about your love, I'd run out of paper. And if I sing about your mercy, I'd run out of breath. There's not enough pain in the world to paint a picture of your splendor. There's not enough words to describe the awesome one. Your mercy is oceans deep. Your love is where I want to be. Your grace is more than I can ever believe. If I wrote about your love, I'd run out of paper. And if I sing about your mercy, Oh, 
ocean is deep. Your love is where I want to be. Your grace is more than I could ever believe. Your mercy is ocean is deep. Your love is where I want to be. Your grace is more than I could ever believe. So pour out your spirit. Pour out your love. Let it overwhelm me. Let it overflow. Pour out your spirit. mercy. Amen. Have you ever, ever looked back on your life and looked at all the times that God has had mercy on you? His grace has touched you and how he's, he's provided for you and, and think how, how could he be so, so forgiving? How could it be so merciful? How could it be so long suffering with me? I, 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 I was such a mess and he did so much. I'm telling you, amen. I don't, I don't think it's humanly possible for us to really understand the love of God, amen, how much he loves us. Amen. How much he's merciful to us. 
Amen. The song says his mercy is oceans deep. Oceans deep. Oceans deep. Deeper, deeper still. Deeper than, than, than you think. So, so I went too far from God. I'm way too deep in sin. Amen. I want to tell you, his mercy is much deeper than the depth of your sin. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. If we could truly understand the height and the depths of the love of God. Amen. Oh, I believe it would be easier for us sometimes, easier for us to grasp in faith, hold of what God wants to do in our life if we truly understood, amen, his heart towards us. Amen. I said earlier in this revival, amen, I'll say it again this morning, God's not mad at you. Amen. God is not mad at you. Amen. But he desires to touch you. He desires to draw you in. Amen. His desire is to make you more like him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to read something this morning. Um, it's a little different. Um, um, I, I don't, I didn't write this. It's, it's not, it's not really a poem. It, it's more of a, I, I guess they call it now a spoken word. Um, there's a, there's a young girl in uh, Brother Atkins School of Ministry that uh, the Lord just deals with. She sits down and begins to write these things. And uh, she read this the other day in Revival, and it really touched me. And, uh, and it was powerfully anointed. I, I want to read it this morning, and, and maybe you'll find yourself in this. Amen. Hallelujah. And then we'll go on into the message I feel on my heart. But uh, I, just, I, just, I just feel this way this morning. So I want to do my best to obey the Lord. Hallelujah. I see you there. I see you, my daughter. I see you, my son, hurting, hopeless, hiding, hindered by the past mistakes you just can't leave under the blood, troubled by the times you failed, perplexed by the problems that seem to surround you, cast down by the cares of the world. I see you. Hallelujah. I see your needless struggles. I see your pain. The pain you choose above my healing. I see your endless toil. I see your helplessness. Don't look at me that way. I never ask you to stay there. That prison was never meant to hold you. Well, I allowed you to visit there, yes, but you choose to stay. You look at the chains. You looked at the chains. You sat down and you cried. That battle wasn't supposed to entrap you. From my point of view, victory was inevitable, but you only saw the possibility of defeat. That mountain wasn't intended to ground you. It was meant to inspire you. You thought it was an obstacle. You never did see my purpose, did you? So you sit, you cry, you pout. You wonder why I didn't send an earthquake to shake your prison walls. You despair because I haven't snatched you from the fight. You excuse yourself from the kingdom work because that mountain still stands before you. But don't you see, I never stop leading you on. You just stop following. Hallelujah. I didn't bring you to the prison for you to sit in the cell and rot. Come on, I died for you. Why would I hide my treasure? No, I brought you into the prison so you wouldn't stay there. I permitted Satan to bind you so that you could experience freedom. Hallelujah. I took you to the prison so you could walk out. How else would you know my power, trust my ability, and be so confident in me that you would willingly go back into that prison and convince someone else that their destiny lies beyond those prison walls? And that battle, the same. My child, I didn't take you to the front lines to destroy you or to place you in the fight of your life for nothing. I wanted you to see that choosing my will keeps you alive. And then when you see someone about to enter that war zone, you can step up and fight to the finish with them. You've been in the battle, and now you know the victory song. And that mountain, I didn't demolish it like you asked, because I wanted you to discover my strength is always, always, always enough get your eyes on me hallelujah and when you do you'll see that the purpose of every prison every battle every mountain i bring you through so i can take you back to get somebody else hallelujah oh hallelujah oh hallelujah 
I want to tell you this morning, God's purpose in your life is victory. God hasn't forgotten about you. God has no orphans. He has sons and daughters. God has never abandoned a one. Hallelujah. He's never forgotten one. He's never forsaken one individual. Amen. I've been through dark nights. You have to. I've been through hard trials. You have to. Amen. But I've turned around and realized after the purpose of uh, and the plan of God. Amen. He was molding my life and building character. He placed me there for a reason. Amen. And you know, when you're given a hard trial or a hard test in school, they teach you and they teach you and they give you that test. Let it before you. The purpose of that test is not to humiliate you, not to show the class or the teacher what you don't know. The purpose of that test is to pass that test. Amen. To show that you have learned the lessons that they've been studying up to that point. And God allows us to face things. He allows difficult times. Amen. You know why? Amen. So we'll pass that. So we'll grow in grace and knowledge. Amen. To be that stronger Christian. Hallelujah. Not just living, amen, from, from barely making it, surviving from survival to survival. But God wants us to live from revival to revival with victory in our hearts. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you turn to Matthew chapter 8. Amen. Again, familiar scripture. All that we say that, it ought to all be familiar to us. Amen. The readers of the Word of God, praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 8, that's what I have on my heart this morning. I feel like the Lord would like to touch us, like to help us this morning. And, and I, I always struggle, amen, and not, not in my, my, in my uh, I guess, delivery of a, of a sermon. I, I'm, I, just, I, I just do the best I can, amen. Not a whole lot to worry about there, amen. But I always struggle in my heart, my spirit. Lord, help me to get this across. Help me. Amen, to be your hands and feet and reach and touch that life. And I, I greatly desire this morning that God will touch you. Amen, you know who you are. Amen, God is reaching and desiring to do a work in your life this morning. And I, I, I pray, Lord, let it be so. Let it be so, amen. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1. When he was come down, speaking of Jesus from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Amen. He was looking for change, wasn't he? And he was wanting God to do, amen, surgery, amen, physical, amen, spiritual surgery in his life. Verse 3, and Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. Be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus saith unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, shew thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the privilege to preach your gospel this morning. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your spirit. Oh, I feel, I feel such a closeness this morning of your tender spirit in this house, Lord. Surely you haven't come by for no reason, but God, with great purpose and great intention, you've chosen to come by and to visit us this morning in the service. And I'm asking you, Lord, let your will be done. Touch us. Hallelujah. Touch us, Lord. Reach down. God, help us not to pull away in a shy way. But God, with your great mercy, reach down and touch us with a transforming touch, a tender touch, a life-changing touch this morning, I pray. Let your will be done. Give us ears to hear and hearts to receive. This morning, the message will give you the praise and the glory, God, if you don't move. Amen. We're wasting our time. Amen. But if you move this morning, God, great things can happen. We believe that. In the name of Jesus, have your way. Everyone says amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The power of his touch. Amen. Hallelujah. Humans, individuals, amen, we know going to school and growing up that if things are working as they should, we possess, amen, uh, five basic senses in our, in our body, and, and those are the, uh, the, the, the sight, the hearing, taste, smell, and touch. Amen. The, we can feel things. Amen. All of them are important to our existence and our understanding in the world around us. Amen. And while all are important, and I, I wouldn't want to be without any 
uh, of my abilities to, to talk or to see or to hear or, amen, or, or, to, or to feel or to touch or any of these things. I, I do know folks, amen, that have experienced losing part of, of one of their senses or some of their senses. And I know people that have lost all of some of their one of their senses, I mean, they can't hear or, or they can't see. And uh, I know some that temporarily after going through some types of surgeries and things like that, they even lost their ability to taste. And, and that was a, a great, great heartache to them and a, a great thing, you know. But I, I've never heard, uh, and, and I've never in my, never have heard, and there may be a case, hey, man, I, I've had feeling go, go dead in a part of my body, hey, man, for one reason, I cut the end of this finger off working one time, putting up a chain link fence, smashed the end of it off, and they deadened that with needles, and, and, and it was totally dead, and I'm very glad because it was really hurting very bad. Hey, man, but can you imagine what it would be like to live, hey, man, without the ability to feel, without the ability to touch anything, hey, man, to receive a touch or, or to give a touch, to lose, hey, man, the sense of touch? Can you imagine what it, was, what it would be like to to not be able to touch your world. Amen. Can you imagine, amen, going and, and, and maybe, amen, you're going out and, and you're walking in the evening and afternoon outside your house and you're walking by the flowers and, and you can smell the flowers and, and, and you can hear the sounds around you and, and you can see, amen, the sun shining, amen, and that the wind is blowing through the trees, but you can't feel that cool breeze blow on your face. Can you imagine what it would be like to be uh, in that direct sunlight on maybe a chilly morning and you don't feel the warmth of the sunshine as it warms up your face and warms up your body to not be able, amen, to feel or to be able to touch, amen, hallelujah. There are a lot of things that, that I'm familiar with in life that I enjoy, amen, placing my hand on and touching, amen, and, 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 and I, I can't imagine what it would be like, Brother Joe, to go fishing somewhere and, and to take my reel rod and to cast the line out. And, and, and not be able to feel that string up under my thumb and just leaving that reel, going out and slowing it down a little bit to get it to land just right where I wanted to and not be able to have that, that feel. That's a, that's a familiar feel. I, I like that, that feeling to touch that. Hey, man, praise the Lord. I can't imagine what it would be like, hey, man, to, 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 uh, to live in a life where I wasn't able to reach out and to touch. I like to do uh, woodworking and carpentry and things I've just done growing up. I can't imagine what it would be like to be working on wood and sanding the board and getting everything just right. And when I get to where I, I, I need to, not being able to go and rub my hand up and some of you do that, amen. Rub and feel that smooth edge where that sander just brought it right down, just perfect. Smooth that joint just right. There's no edge, amen. Hell, I can't imagine what it would be like to live without, amen, without that touch, amen, in my life. More important than touching objects. Amen, and that we and we do that every day. A thousand things we touch, rails and inanimate objects. I can't imagine what it would be like, Amen, to live a life, Amen, and, and not be able to touch those that I love, Amen, with a tender touch, an intimate touch, uh, 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 an affectionate touch. I, I I shouldn't do it so much, probably, but I have, Amen, a, a, a habit of of my, my son when he comes near me. I like to reach out. I like to touch his hair. I like to feel it, that fuzzy, that fuzzy head, amen. Praise the Lord. And, and to touch that, I, I, not just that, but I like to feel the warmth of his skin. There's something about that, amen. I know he's alive. I know he's real. He, he's okay. He's all right. He's mine. Hey, man, that touch is communicating. It's doing something in my heart, amen. Praise the Lord. Sometimes I wake up at night and I go to check on him. I go in the room where he's asleep and, and, and I, it's dark and I can't see. And I just reach my hand out and rub it across his back. And I feel him, amen, the warmth. I feel his breath moving in his body. I can't imagine losing my ability to touch or to be touched. Amen, for you see, when we reach out and we touch others, when we touch, amen, amen, for the reason of affection, we touch for the reason of checking on others, amen, we're not just touching them, they're touching us. And it's a communication. It's like we're, we're plugging in and, and, and there are signals being sent, signals are being received, Amen. There's a touch that's going on. It's meaning more than I can feel them. They're soft or they're warm or they're cold or it's hard or, or whatever. Amen. But it's, it's real. It's tangible. It's alive. It's changing me at that moment. I touch it. Amen. It's changing my thought process in my mind. It's ordering things. It's giving me worry or it's giving me ease. Amen. It's changing my emotions. The power of a touch. Amen. We touch.
touch thousands of things a day in our lives. And most of them, we don't even think about them. But there are times we reach out and touch things deliberately. Amen. With the intention of moving and changing and transforming. Amen. We, we, we feel there's power in our touch. And there is power in our touch. Amen. I, I remember uh, Braden as a little child. Amen. Jumping on the bed. You parents just know what I mean. That, that instinct you have doing something on the bed. And I was turned around and something told me, catch him. And in a moment, I turned around and I stretched out. Boy, I'm telling you, there's never been a, been a, a, a receiver in football make a better catch. Laid out across that bed as he was falling off the other side and caught him going down. Amen. Hallelujah. I reached out with the intention of changing something without touching. Grab, right before he hit the floor. And the mouse, I mean, he was a small, small little boy. Amen. With the power of touch, I grabbed him. I lifted him up. I manipulated him and put him to a place where I wanted him to be. We do have power in our touch. We, we, we communicate through that. We reach out. We come up to individuals that are going through something, good times and bad times. We put our arm around them. And we intend, amen, for our touch to mean something. Amen. There's great power in just our touch. You ever go to a hospital where a, a, a new father, first time father, has just had a, a child born, amen, or a mother, either one, and, and you go in there, and most of the time the mother's not in the hallway looking at the glasses with the father, and you go in there and he's standing there looking at that glass and that brand new little boy, little girl, and he's proud and he's very emotional. He's right on the edge of it spilling out of his being, and, and you walk up beside him and you put your arm around him. You just pat him on the shoulder and smile because you know he's feeling all that joy and bubbling up and he kind of looks at you and, and they try not to be manly and try not to cry and, and all that stuff and that lip just goes, you know, there's so much joy. You know what you do with that touch? You trigger the release of that emotion and that joy. You share that joy. And there's a share. There's a communication. There's a nearness. There's a closeness. There's a drawing. Just with a human touch, there's a drawing together. Hey, man, you've been there when families have faced things and they're going through. Your own family and other families, folks you're close to. Hey, man, even coworkers, and they're facing hard times and you know they're under the burden. You know they're in the mouth of the heart is broken. And you don't have to say a word. You just ease up beside them. Put your arm around them. Pat them on the shoulder. Hey, man, as if to say, I understand. I know where you are. I know what you're going through. And that touch, just your touch, communicates great volumes in their lives. And tears roll down their face. They break. They maybe turn and face you. Lay their head on your shoulder. And they weep and they cry. Oh, my. I want to tell you, there's great power in a touch. Hey, man. I said there's great power, great ability. And just the human touch, there's great communication. Amen. Hallelujah. We can reach out and deliberately touch. And I, amen. I tell you, it's the will of God and us as a church that we not lose our ability. Amen. And our desire to touch others. Amen. That we not lose our ability and our desire to reach out and to go where the others are and to touch them. Not only touch them, but allow them to touch us. Amen. Allow them to touch us. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Allow them. Amen. That when we reach out and touch them, their problem, their situation touches our life, breaks our heart. Let's water run down our face, amen. Until we cry out with them, oh God, help them. Oh God, thank you for what you've done for them. And allow ourselves to be involved in what they're in. Amen. That one touch, and probably why I've said this and spoke of this, many of you have remembered moments, instances in your life. Or you gave a touch, or you received a touch. Somebody touched you with their, hey amen, with their, just their touch. Hey amen, they reached out, and they, oh, hallelujah. I was reading and praying and, and, and preparing for this message. And you know what I thought about? I thought about many times as a child when I was sick. I was sick and, 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 and afraid as a child. The touch I remember was my mom coming there with a rag, and she'd wipe my brow. And wipe my face. And she put her hand, you know how moms do, put her filthy and rub it up and put it right there on my head. And just leave it there. And I remember that touch. That's telling me everything's going to be okay. You're going to be all right, Brad. Don't be afraid. Mama's here. Amen. Pray. And it's all going to be all right. Amen. Hallelujah. There's so many emotions and so many processes that are involved in a touch. Amen. And often a touch can change. Amen. In our life. Amen. We live in a dead hour. We're afraid sometimes to be touched by others. 
Hey, man, I'm taking my time trying to get my voice to, to last us out this morning. We live in a day and hour where we're almost afraid sometimes to be touched by others. Hey, man, I, we, we, you, we've all had that animal or that pet or that dog or seen that dog. Hey, man, that he's been abused, come across, hey, man, or, or, or what? We had an old uh, uh, blue tick hound dog. So one day, one time, we were, we were boys that somebody gave give us, and we were tickled to death because it was a pretty dog, and we had always wanted that old hound dog. Hey, man, to bark, and then old floppy ears, and wanted that dog, and here was somebody to give us one, and we were tickled to death of what we didn't know. Hey, man, that dog had went through a lot before he got to us. And we get out there and we try to play with him. He'd hang around the yard. He'd eat all the food. We'd get out and we'd get a little near and say, come on, Blue. Come on, boy. Hey, man, and we reach out and, and we reach a hand too quick. And that dog, you know, he's getting out of there. You know why? He was afraid for us to touch him. Hey, man, he was afraid for us to reach out. Somebody had already touched him. Somebody had already touched him a lot. I mean, you can hardly get near him. Hey, man, we tried and tried and we baited him with food. We try to get him to come close. We try to reach out and try to touch him. He always would shy away. And I didn't realize and didn't know the extent to what he had been abused. And we, we didn't understand. And we tried in our little childish ways to get him to come. Brother Joe, we never got to touch that dog. We never got close to him. I didn't realize it. Amen. But somebody not only had beaten him really badly and abused him really badly, but they had, I guess, shot at him a lot with their, with their firearms and, uh, and, and, and really just terrorized this dog to the extent that one day we come outside and we didn't think nothing about it because we lived in the country and we always hunted and shot and target practice and stuff like that. And we, we brought our shotguns out and was going to shoot and, and, and sight something in. I don't remember exactly what we were doing. And then that dog was there and we tried to call. He wouldn't come near. We loaded those guns out and we, we seen kind of tuck tail and ease off a little ways. When we started firing, I looked up and that dog was headed across the field, gone, running for his life. And I thought, what in the world? He'll come back. You know what? He never came back. That dog was gone. Hey, man, he'd been touched in a bad way. He'd been destroyed his life. Hey, man, his heart broken, his will. Hey, man, he was shaking, trembling. We found him later on, a couple of weeks later on. The neighbors calling us, was that our dog up there somewhere? We found him a couple of fields over, laid him outside of his room where he fell over and died. And I, I guess I suppose we killed him, give him a heart attack or, or, or whatever, not knowing. You know why? He experienced many bad touches in his life. Something had broken him. Something had destroyed him. Amen. So when he come into our house, boys that would have loved to have that dog and hug him around the neck and then do all the things that mamas are terrorized of, kiss him on the, oh, Lord, don't touch that nasty dog. You know, boy, how boys are just to get all dirty and nasty. Amen. We love to do that. We never could touch him. We never could reach out. Amen. We never could get close. And, and there was, there was a wall and there was a bear there. There was always a brokenness there. Something I couldn't, amen, couldn't break past. Brother Joe, I've lived long enough. And I've come in contact and tried to touch enough people that I, I've met folks that are that same way. Hey Amen. They're individuals I know. And they've been touched not in a loving way and not in a, a tender way, but they've been touched in a wrong way. They're broken and they're hurting. Hey Amen. And their lives are destroyed. I'm telling you, even in services like we've had, where the anointing of God comes by and pleads and moves and reaches and draws, and the hand of God reaches down to touch you. I've watched individuals as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords reaches for them. And they draw back within their heart. And even though amen, they may feel such a need and a desire and they know that they need God in their lives, they've been hurt so much, there's a drawing back in their spirit. Hallelujah. There's a drawing back, amen, from the Lord, from the presence of God. I want to tell you again, God's not mad at you. Hallelujah, God is not mad at you. Amen, God's not come down to beat you and draw you up and lash you to the post and to wear you out. Amen, God's not here to verbally assault you. Amen, to tell you how dirty and low down and rotten you are and how good for nothing you are and you'll never get up again. You'll never be good for nothing and it'll be best if you've never been born. Let me obey the Lord this morning. Just, just preach what's on my heart if I can. Hallelujah. I know that, that we have the, the, there's great crimes in this nation. People that are solid. They've been there. They're struck. They're beaten. Hey amen. There are laws. And, 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 and I know, amen, in homes and their kids and, and husbands and wives and all these 
to experience physical abuse, I want to tell you, one of the worst forms of abuse there is, is verbal abuse. Hey Amen. Words do hurt. We said as kids, sticks and stones may break my bones. I don't know why I'm getting on this, but I feel the Lord right here. Draw me. Sticks and stones may break my bones. The words never hurt me. That's wrong. Words do hurt you. How words will hurt you and wound you. Hey man, I read something one time that said, call my heart and call my attention. And, and I think about it a lot, hey amen. So writer was writing. He said, when I get angry, when I, when I get upset at myself, he said, and, I, and I'm arguing, telling myself you're good for nothing and you're, you're dirty and, and, and you'll never mind. He said, I hear the voice of my father in my head saying that to me. He said, it's that voice I hear. I thought, Lord, I don't want my child to grow up and hear me fussing to him. Hey, man, not that I will get on to him like I should. I, I do. I try to. But be loving. I don't want my child to grow up and to fail or do something and hear my voice in his hand saying, you're good for nothing. You're worthless. You'll never amount to anything. I'm telling you, though, there are folks on the face of the earth. That's, that's how they've been touched. They've been touched, amen, in a way that's abusive to them. Amen. Verbally, amen. And when they come in the house of God and God reaches out to them and God say, God said, you're worth it. The Lord died for you. Jesus says some for you. The Lord loves you. All they can hear in their head is a voice saying, no, he's not. Amen. You're not worth it. You're good for nothing. God doesn't love you. He, why would God die for you? Why would the Lord move in your life? Why would he change you? Amen. They're afraid of his touch. Your individuals have been touched in a wrong way. Amen. Hallelujah. I was pastor in the church at Cordial. We did a lot of outreach. We brought in a bunch of kids. I never want to embarrass anybody in any way. We brought in a, a bunch of kids, a pile of kids. Hey, man, it didn't take long for being around them. You could tell which ones, hey, man, had experienced the bad touch. There were some you'd reach out. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Hey, man, he dug. Hey, man, she shy away. Somebody was abusing them. Somebody, the touch in their life was a heat. It was an abusive touch. Hey, folks that grow up, hey, man, and they feel like coming to church, maybe, hey, man, even the church they went to before, it was an abusive touch they experienced. Hey, and maybe behind the pulpit, somebody beat them, hey, man. Somebody went with them. It was an abuse, a verbal assault. Hey, man, I, I know individuals. Oh, Lord, help me. I'm not trying to throw off on any church or any organ. I got no stones to throw on anybody, but I, I know individuals. I've talked to and prayed to. To, amen. They struggle in their walk with God. They struggle receiving from God or even believing God could forgive them. Because they believed God was so mad at them. You know why? The preacher where they went, and I know Brother Joseph, but the preacher where they had went for some while, amen, told them he was and how wroth he was with them and how he wanted to destroy them, amen, and how they were just on, on a hair and how God was just looking for a moment to waste their life and they'd never be worth anything to God. I want to tell you, that's not the heart of God. That's not the touch of God. That's not the voice of God. We don't have an abusive father. We have a correcting father, but not an abusive father. Hey man, hallelujah, my dad never abused me growing up. And there were times he corrected me and I deserved every bit of it. If I hadn't been for that, I'd be in the jailhouse this morning. Hey man, we don't have an abusive father. We have a corrective father. I want to tell you, we don't have to be afraid of his touch this morning. We don't have to be afraid of his touch. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh Lord. I dealt with a young boy one time, hey amen, and then, and then we, I, I was trying to work with him. I knew God was walk, working in his life, and, and God was dealing with him, hey amen. He would come to the altar to pray, and then the Holy Ghost touched him in tears, broken and crying and pray. He'd cry and pray and get to a point where he couldn't get no further, seemed like. What's wrong, buddy? I just can't believe that God would do such for the like of me, Brother Pratt. Don't you know? Still in that prison of her past and could not be touched. Could not be touched. There are so many in the natural experiencing that bad touch, but oh, even in the spirit, there are so many have experienced that whooping from somebody, amen, who had no wisdom and really no anointing, serving their own purpose. But I will tell you, it doesn't matter what somebody has said to you, amen, what they told you, that God is mad at you. God's not mad at you. He's not come to whip you. Hey man, you don't have to be afraid of his touch. You don't have to be afraid of, of his touch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy 
Holy Ghost moves in our services sometimes. I want you to hear me this morning. I'm trying to slow down and not get ahead of myself. The Holy Ghost moves sometimes in our services. Hey Amen. And, and, and we want him to move all the time. Oftentimes he comes by. He touches and blesses. Hey Amen. His spirit comes by. He never comes by by accident. Hey Amen. You're facing something. You're struggling with something. You're going through something. The Holy Ghost begins to move in a service. Hey Amen. And, and, and the Spirit of God is moving. Somebody is singing. And they begin to testify. And they'll say something like, Oh, the Spirit of God's here. He's come to touch you. And we always think, Well, Maybe he'll touch so and so or or them, but you know, not me, because it's been a rough day and I had time to pray and I I really don't deserve it. I don't know why why would God touch me? I'm I'm not the pastor or I'm not the teacher, I'm not this or that, or I'm not somebody, I'm just little old me, I'm just little old nobody. Hey man, we'll shy away from that touch. Hey man, hallelujah, we're afraid. Oh, we're afraid. I can't get it off my heart, brother Joe. I don't know why I keep coming back to it. Hey man, but I just feel like in my, in my spirit there's someone here. Hey man, maybe somebody has made you afraid of being touched. Maybe in the natural or spiritual. Hey man, you've been abused by somebody's touch. But I want to tell you what God has brought me here this morning to tell you. It's not to be afraid of his touch. Because his touch, it's a different touch. It's a loving touch. It's a transforming touch. And he can heal your life. Life. Heal your, your body, your mind. Hey man, there's a little video I watched the other day. I'm not the sad, sappy type. Don't get me wrong. I, I was scrolling through Facebook, commenting on something. Somebody shared a little thing. They share these little videos that says if you watch this video and you don't ball your eyes out, you're not human. You know, I, they, they're never that bad. But I seen that video and I clicked on it, and it was a mangy, abused dog that had been so beaten. So uh, abused, you couldn't hardly see the features on his face. And it shows a little time lapse, you know, as they come in where that dog was. And they went in there and it said, This dog experiences a first human touch in love. This was the title of it. It showed that worker as they got in the pen of that dog, that dog, you know, fight or, or, or flight mode. And it's, it's backing up and it's terrorizing it's, that dog. He's got his tail between his legs, looking for somewhere to go. And they got her in the corner, eased far real slow. And they're talking real sweet to the dog. And that dog, is, its mouth is it, open. It's, it's like someone I never saw. Its mouth was open almost in a silent screen. It's going, just working that jaw. Like, I'm afraid of your touch. And that aid worker got closer and got closer and got right down there where that dog was and let the dog see he wasn't going to hit it or strike it. That dog's balled up in a little ball, ribs showing and mangy and nasty, his mouth all open and terrorized. And when she reached out and she touched that dog for the first time and, and rubbed her hand down his head and down his back like she did, that dog was so afraid of being touched that, that it was like a, 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 a wind or a, a noise just escaped his mouth and it was kind of like, I never seen anything in my life. I was just kind of shocked. Like, man, that, that that animal, the pain in this case, it was, it, was, it was afraid at any moment this is going to hurt me. Any moment this is going to destroy me. I'm telling you, God's not like that, folks. I know the devil may be fighting some of you. Amen. Say at any moment, it's too good to be true. Amen. This is going to hurt. Amen. Now, people have let you down. Somebody's hurt you. Somebody's broken you. I'm telling you, God's not about to hurt you. God's not about to break you. God's not about to forsake you. He's not about to abuse you or leave you alone. I'm talking about a touch. Amen. When God touched that leper man, he made him absolutely whole. He made I'm talking about a healing touch, a powerful touch that God wants to put in your life. Hallelujah. You got a friend, amen, who lives in another state, several states away. Amen. The situation come up uh, uh, sometime back. Amen. There was a, a preacher, amen, in that area that he come out that he had done some, some bad things, abused some folks, and, and uh, been a hypocrite. There's some wrong things. And that it makes me, well, I'll tell you, it hurts my heart. But it makes me angry, too. I'll just be honest with you. When I hear something like that happening, hey, man, and, and the reflection of Castle, it come out. I knew the guy. I knew who he was. Didn't know him very good. I knew who he was. Knew the area. At one time, early on, I missed you. I evangelized a lot in that area. A lot. A lot of lot in that area. And, and, and then the whole thing's coming out. And, and the news is involved. There's newspaper articles and things. Police have arrested the guy. And, 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 amen, for bad touch. Amen. 
and what he's done. I thought, man, I, you know, and all of a sudden I get a message uh, on Facebook from a friend. It's, and the, the, the man, he, and, and he, he said, Brother Brad, I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray. This is a young man I preached to, worked with, reached for, never could get to him. I couldn't get close to him. Never, never could get him. He'd come to church, sit there, and cry. God, I never could get to him. Hey, man, he, he, he began to talk and confess and say, I was one of those. I was one of the, I feel holy. Oh, I was one of those. I was one of those that man messed with. And, and it's been something I face all. I want you to pray for him. I'm going to talk today. They've asked me to come in. I've been interviewed. And they said, I want you to pray for me. He's reaching out to somebody he knew that tried to touch him in the right way. Hey, man, I said, that man messed me up. And I, I messed him messed up. And I need help. I need prayer. Oh, but, you know, brother, that, that tears me up. Hey, man, that breaks my heart. I want to tell you. Hey, man, I feel, oh, I feel the whole it may be a bad touch you experience but I want to tell you that's not what God is all about Amen. God is wanting to touch you he's wanting to heal you, save you, deliver you this is not an abusive amen, catastrophic thing where God's going to destroy you now, it's okay to surrender to his touch, it's okay to let it out of a coach out of a high it's spirit of God moving your life Amen. To be intimate with you, it's okay to let God put his arms around you and say I love you my child Oh, 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 love is not abuse. Love is not being, hey man, being manipulated, hey man, and somebody controlling you just to get what's good for them out of your life. Love, hey man, is a touch of God embracing you, saying, you're mine, I'm yours. You're in a battle, I'm in a battle. I'm fighting for you, I'm on your side. I love you so much. I sent my only begotten son, and he died in your place. Oh, God. Oh, hallelujah. Have your way right now, Lord. Have your way. His touch is an intimate touch. When he touched that leper, he was saying, I want to be in contact directly with your life. And God is dealing with some of you. And God has touched some of you even this week. And told you, I want to be involved in your life. Don't push me away. Don't turn me aside. I know others have messed you up. I know others have touched you in the wrong. But I've come to touch you to make all things new. All things new. That broken heart you've experienced. The pain of rejection. That crushing blow you felt when dad left. Oh, God. That, that destroyed lie. All that, you, that hurt. I want to put my hands on that. And I want to heal. I want to make all things, all things new. Oh, I feel the Lord. I want to touch that, that brokenness and that feeling of loneliness. I want you to give it to me. I want to take that lonely heart. I want that heart to feel like, hey amen, that you've got a best friend and a bosom buddy. I want to make all things new. His touch is an intimate touch. It's not just a pat on the head or a touch on the back, but he wants to reach down and touch your heart and to transform your life and for you to know, oh, I am loved and I am cared for. There's a God in heaven that loves me more anybody else in this world he touched that leper amen he wasn't just okay buddy you can do better come on he wasn't just a touch like what we say just a touch here a touch, and I feel better it was a transforming intimate touch that thing changed his life all oh, the brokenness and the sickness and the disease that disease that caused him to be an outcast in society he didn't fit in anywhere. Everywhere he had to cry, unclean, unclean, unclean. Oh, God. And some of us walking through this life, we all say that with our mouth, with the way we dress and the way we act. Well, tell folks, don't get near me. Don't touch me. I'm unclean. Don't come close to me. Hey, I'm an outcast. Don't get near me. Go to the mall. You don't believe me. You'll see young folks there. They're telling the world I'm an outcast. Amen. I don't want anybody to touch me. Hey, Amen. I've got to... We got a young friend, hey amen, that's in that situation. Hey amen, hey amen, there's a certain style, a certain way that they dress. Hey amen, and all this black and stuff like that. And they're telling the world, my emotions are dead. I don't want you to touch me. I don't want you to come near me. I'm shutting out everything. Don't come close to me. Hey amen, don't touch me. You know what they're crying out? 
I'm a leper. I'm unclean. I want to tell you one that can touch them. I want to tell you one that can touch you. He can go where you are. Hey, man, living in a broken home, living in a, in a, in a, in a, 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 a situation, amen, maybe, where things aren't conducive, amen, to a whole lot of loving atmosphere. There's a God in heaven who's not like our love. It's not conditional. It's not based on your performance, amen. Hey, man, when you dot every I and you cross every T and when you get everything just right in your life, God in heaven is not going to love you more then than he does right now. He loves you right now. Just as much as he will ever love you. He desires to touch you. Not only is to a touch, his touch is a powerful touch. Amen. I can read the list. I've got a list here. In my notes, amen. Those he touched in the word of God. Simon became Peter and Jacob. The old trickster became Israel and Abraham. Abram became Abraham and Elijah. Amen. The defeated Elijah became Elijah. The man of God. His touch changed Moses from a murderer to a leader. His touch changed Jeremiah from, to, from a weeping prophet to the prophet of God. Amen. Touch changed, changed James and John, the sons of thunder, into early martyrs. Amen. A powerful. And all the list goes on and on of those in the word of God he touched. I can tell you better than that one day he touched me and I was lost and I was broken I, was, I know the Bible he talks, I was talks about those I didn't know them I can read about them and be amazed but I didn't know them I can tell you I know when he touched me and I know when he saved me and I know when he changed me and I know when my heart began to think and begin to feel anew and I know when the healing power of God came in Hallelujah. Amen. There are other individuals, and I'm being careful not to name names, say things. I wouldn't want to embarrass anybody. There are other individuals. Their names aren't written in Scripture. We can't read about them in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or any in the Old Testament. There are other individuals that are alive today, walking the face of the earth, and they were abused. They were touched for home. I want to tell you about their touch. Even, even though abandoned and forsaken. And I'm thinking about a preacher friend of mine. Even though abandoned at an early age. Even though his father ran off and went somewhere else. And he never even knew at an early age. And raised by his mom. They stole, even though the touches he had weren't always touches of love and affection and affirmation. Hey man, you know what? One day he experienced the touch of the master. And God healed his life. Hey man, got right in there. That part, that part that he had shoot. Everybody a wave. No, don't touch me. I, that's, a, that's a her place. It's a t- don't touch he had pushed everybody else away when God touched you he healed that brokenness I feel like I'm talking to somebody this morning I don't know you brother 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 Job our pastor's not told me anything about you I mean we haven't talked about anybody here hey man to my recollection in the service or anything in your lives but I feel on my heart hey amen like talking to you this morning about the touch of God and now he specializes in healing those broken things. And I don't know what you faced. I don't know what the abuse has been. I don't know, amen, why it is that you're so afraid to let the Lord have his way in your life. To surrender, let God move in your home, your marriage. Amen. And your I don't know what it might be, but I don't know God has come today to heal you touch you. I'm hurrying. Hey Amen. I'm trying to come to a close here and I got like a little clock. I'm looking. I don't want to keep you too long. I feel this weight he burned on my heart this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His touch. Brother Joe sang this morning. He started singing that song. I dropped my head and shook my head and said, oh God, what a song. If I can just touch the hem of his garment. If I can just, I know how I'll be made whole. Hey Amen. It's one thing to have that kind of faith. And I thank God when he gives me that. that I come to service I, or at home in prayer. I'm praying and I have the faith to believe. Man, if I can just touch him. If I can just get through. Boy, I'm telling you, I've had some great victories in my home life. At home, knelt down by the recliner or wherever. Where I prayed through. And the Spirit of God come by me. And come by and I was able to touch him. And reach out and touch him. Amen. He sang that though. I thought, oh, amen, how many times. Amen, I was not able to have that. Hey, man, we're not like the woman's crying. If I can just touch him, we're sitting somewhere. Help me, Lord. Hallelujah. We're just sitting somewhere, yeah, maybe in a corner. Hey, Amen. We're in church, but we're here. Hey, Amen. Lord, I know you're, you're touching others. Hey, Amen. I know you're helping others. 
Amen. I know we're revival, Lord. I need you, Lord, but don't don't get too close. Amen. Don't get hey man, oh just touch you. Oh, hallelujah. We may not show it on the outside, but in our spirit, there's somebody here this morning. You're afraid to let God touch you. You may be in the natural right now. You're huddled somewhere spiritually in you. And you know that if God was to touch your life, it'd be great. It'd be transforming. Hey, man, but you're like that old abuse dog or an abuse child to where how to get a corner. Oh, God, there's wounds in my life and there's hurts in my life and I don't know what to do with it. I know you're nearby and I know you like to touch me. But God, I'm afraid. I'm fearful, God, of what it might be like. I want to tell you this morning, even that God's great mighty power has come to my child. He's come to heal that hurt. He's come to destroy and to break that chain of bondage. I want to tell you this morning about a touch that's a healing touch and that can change everything. Change everything. So my wife goes to the piano. And just play whatever you feel in your heart. Oh, God. Oh, God, help me to say it. Like it needs to be said this morning. Amen. Hey, I'm not trying to give you a pretend problem or place on you a diagnosis to make you feel like there's a problem. If there's not one, I feel like I'm talking to somebody this morning. There's an area in your life you pulled away from God. You back it away from God. You can't go back in the back far corner. You may even worship and sing and get in the service. But down deep inside, down inside your heart, there's a small child held in the corner saying, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I'm afraid back. Don't you? Oh, I'm not saying, hey amen, you're a wreck or, or you're back for anything. I, I'm saying God is trying to touch you. He's trying to change you. There's a work God wants to do on your life. There's a purpose, amen, he's like to bring you to. But you're stuck in almost, amen, and you almost get free. But you can't quite allow God to get right where he needs to in your life. I'm talking about a touch of the master. Hallelujah this morning. I'm talking about the healing touch of the Savior. Let's stand all over the church this morning. I love to give it all a call. If you will, let's just stand. Amen, saints. Let's pray. Ask God to help us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Brother Brown. I haven't been abused or I haven't been anything. Hey, I'm not saying how. I'm talking about that fearfulness of, amen, of God touching your life. He's reached already in this revival in previous services, but there's a drawback in your heart. But the Holy Ghost has come out this morning in the service, and God said, Expose that wound to me. I'm a healer. I'm a healer. I'm a healer. Hallelujah. What about it? Sir, man, what about it? Hey, Amen. Is there a place in your life you draw back? I want to ask you right now, everyone, come. Let's gather. Find the place in this order and pray one for another. I feel like God is talking to somebody this morning. Hey, Amen. And he's wanting to get to where you are. Get right up beside you and pour that healing oil in your life. Let's come, everyone. Hallelujah.